1995, I was carjacked. Yes, this is a true story. <laughs> Driving down a road in San Francisco, and some guy jumped into the back seat of my car and said, drive. And I remember splitting into two completely separate personalities. The calm, practical Suzette, who always has a plan B. My husband calls me the pocket general. <laughs> and the terrified, hysterical Suzette, Oh no! He's gonna reach around and cut my throat. He's gonna he's gonna shoot me in the back of the head. Become a moving target. Don't let him grab you. Ah! Ah! <laughs> this isn't working. I'm doing your seatbelt. Run! <laughs> Don't leave the car. Oh, he's got a plan. He's got a plan. He's gonna take me to. God knows where to do who knows what. Oh, 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 oh. Listen to me. Listen to me. I've got the plan. I've got the plan. This is where we make road rage our friend. Hit the blue Taurus in front of you, but not too hard. You don't want to give some poor guy the flash. So, ba bang. And I can see the startled driver in front of me, and he's looking in his mirror, and you could tell his face said it all. This is Monday night. I got a football game to watch. I ain't got time for this. And he just moved out of the way. <laughs> and this is 1995, where nobody has cell phones, and nobody's calling for help. And they're kind of curious. They're like, what's going on over there? Curious, a little confused as to what might be happening over with me here, even though I was ducking and bobbing and weaving and signaling for help. She's dancing. Yeah, she's dancing. She's in the sunshine band. That's what she's doing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it was playing really loudly on the radio. It's a celebration. But I, I was really so scared, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm losing it. And the pocket general said, okay, enough of this noise. You're going to hit that shuttle up ahead. Full force. Do it now, now! And I gunned it and I rammed into the back of this airport shuttle. And everybody was staring and the driver jumped out and I had never been so relieved to see a man coming at me with murderous intent. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy in the back of the seat jumped out and the pocket general jumped out to and said, that guy, that guy right there trying to carjack me, don't let him get away. And I was so pleased to see two beefy guys take off in hot pursuit of him. I had saved my own life. Meanwhile, the police are talking to hysterical Suzette. <laughs> oh my God, he was gonna kill me. He was gonna kill me. So you saw a weapon. What did he have? Knife? Gun? <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know. I don't know. He was directly behind me and I was going Bob and I don't know. I know. No, I didn't see a weapon. So ma'am, you weren't hurt. <laughs> you mean you mean aside from smashing my car? I I, I don't know. No. I guess, I don't know, no, no. Well, ma'am, it's gonna be a little hard to charge him with carjacking since you didn't see a weapon and you didn't sustain any injuries. <laughs> what? <laughs> At that point, the pocket general comes back onto the scene. So officer, let me get this straight. <laughs> He mistook me for a cab, and I simply overreacted? So, the upshot of it was, they caught the guy high on crack cocaine, he was newly released from prison, and back he went because drugs are a parole violation. But he was never charged with anything having to do with me. And so somewhere on a police log, I think my little episode is posted as Cranky Driver Unpaid Fare. <laughs> <laughs> I should sue for post-traumatic stress disorder because a future promising career as an Uber driver, never gonna happen. <laughs>
<laughs> you both like your doors. <laughs>